Hey guys, welcome to the first part of Screamathon, a marathon of the first four Scream movies in preparation for Scream 5. Or just Scream, if but it's Scream 5. Don't answer the phone. Don't open the door. Don't try to hide. Uh, I just watched Scream 1 from 1996, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I enjoyed it a lot, and I feel like I'm going to enjoy the other three. Well, I have high hopes for the next three uh, Scream movies. Also, um, even though I uh, knew a lot of things that were going to happen in this movie, I mean, I was kind of a little off about the twist at the end, but I knew that what was going to happen. I knew that the twist at the end... Um, also, I'm probably going to get into spoilers later on in this video. But also, it's a movie from 1996, so if you haven't seen it, if you're watching this video, you probably should have already seen this movie if you're watching. So, like, I think this movie is fun. I think it's funny. Because it's more. It's mainly a comedy. It's like a, it's like a comedy, pretty much. I think it's pretty... I think the kills are pretty good. I like the kills, even though, um... There's... I mean, there's a few, and they're, they're not as... And they're kind of gory, actually. It's rated R. Yeah, the the beginning kills were pretty good. That was probably the goriest it got. Was at the was at the beginning. I really liked uh, the cold opening. I thought it was a really strong start. Um, even though I I'd already seen it, it was it was still really good. I mean, every, I mean, pretty much everybody's seen the opening of Scream One, but it's still really good. Um, I feel like the ending is also really good. I really like the ending. I mean, even though I saw it coming, it was, I would think it was still good. And there was like, there were like, also, I feel like the, the twist was kind of not obvious, but you could like pretty much, even if it was the first time I saw this movie, maybe I wouldn't have seen Stu being the killer coming if I hadn't like known like beforehand, but I definitely would have seen a uh, Billy I definitely would have seen that coming from a mile away. He was, like, fucking absolutely crazy, and he just didn't even try to hide it, really. <laughs> like, I totally would have saw that one coming. But even, like, the video store scene where they, like... What was that? The guy, green shirt name? Green shirt guy? I forgot the names, man! I forgot his name, but green shirt video store guy. Guy that knows a lot about movies. When they corner him and they, like, start to threaten him, then I would have seen Stu being the killer. Then I saw that coming. But I don't think it's really trying to hide it. It's more like you have to wait for the characters to realize they're not a good guy, not for the audience to realize that they're not a good guy, right? Um, I just also kind of like how Ghostface is kind of, like, he's a bit of an idiot, right? Because he's just a dude. He's not, like, an immortal being like Michael Myers or Jason, you know? Like, if you hit him in the head with a vase, he's going to fall down because he's just a person, right? Which I, I like that detail. And also... Um, I think if you pay attention to, like, the grunts he makes when he gets, like, thwacked in the face with something, you can actually tell what actor it is, which I think is also a neat detail. Uh, I think the little details, like, add up in a movie, you know? You don't, they don't need to be there, but when they are there, I think it enhances the experience, for me, personally, at least. I also think that the movie is so revolutionary because it's just, like, a very meta movie. It's got a lot of, um movie references, horror movie references, because um, cause Wes Craven made it, so there's a Freddy Krueger reference. The janitor at the school is named Fred, and he's got the sweater. He's got his, the sweater and didn't even have the hat. Didn't even have the hat. Yeah, he even had the, like, Freddy hat. I forgot what it's called, but it's 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 the trademark Freddy hat. Like, there's a bunch... Like, the whole movie re is, like, about the concept of horror movies, right? Like, how kind of flawed they were. And I feel like this movie kind of changed that. I kind of got the horror movie, like, business to try to be more unique, try to be more creative. Because around that time before Scream, I feel like it was just getting stale, like they reference in at the beginning, right? They reference at the beginning that they were getting... No, not... Well, they just refer referenced that horror movies were getting stale and they were just, like, the same thing over and over. 
which was kind of true at the time. And it's kind of true now, just not to the same extent. Because they were all just trying to be the next Friday the 13th or the next Halloween. And it just didn't work because you couldn't replicate those because they were, like, revolutionary in their own way, right? Like, also, there's, like, the rules. You can't, like, you can't have sex. You can't do drugs. You know, you can't, you, you can't say that you'll be right back because you never come back. Yeah, I really think this movie succeeded at everything it was trying to do. And I just really enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to the next ones, like I said earlier. So I think I would rate this movie um, probably maybe like an 8.5 out of 10. Alright guys, I hope you come back for part 2 of Screamathon. I'm looking forward to it. And oh, wait, I gotta go grab some from the, the kitchen.